Hi everyone, this is not your sponsor and welcome back again to my channel. In the previous video I made the main airbrush work and also I highlighted and applied the shadows of the olive drop. In this episode I will use acrylic paint to detail the biggest parts of the model. And also later I will apply a heavy dust effect with Humbro enamel paint. This technique will allow us to create a quick and general dust look in our model. First, let's begin by painting the Sherman trucks. Because I glued the entire running gear for a better handling, to paint the trucks and rubber band of the wheels with the airbrush, I will need to mask everything. This is something that I hate, so I will proceed with the brush instead. To create a nice and effective earth color, I take Vallejo Yellow Ochre and Burnt Red and I mix them. The result of those colors is just a nice but too saturated for my taste. To fix this, I add a bit of light grey, also from Vallejo, to desaturate a little bit the earth color. I start painting the inner part of the trucks, applying the paint carefully. I prefer to cover all the truck parts with this earth color. The fluid consistency of the paint allows me to work quickly and it would be only necessary two coats of this paint to have a nice flat finish. In the outer part of the trucks, due to its shape and all the recesses, I have to use the tip of the brush to cover the entire piece. You might see now how this desaturated tone feels once painted on the trucks. To paint the wheels I make a mix between these colors from Vallejo to create a medium grey color. This dark tone will be very useful instead of using pure black. Again I add a few drops of water to make the paint more fluid. For this purpose I prefer to use a rounded brush tip because I feel more comfortable while painting these type of details. My painting way of this type of wheels is very quick. I just handle the piece in a toothpick and I make rounded and circular movements while I paint with the paintbrush. I think it's easier to understand if you watch it instead I explain it. Outer ring of the wheel it's working the same way. But this time instead of using the tip of the brush I prefer to use the body side. This acrylic application could be also applied by masking the inner part of the wheel but as I said before I'm not very masking friendly. In some pieces it might be necessary to apply a second coat of paint. For painting the wheels of the running gear I use the same approach. This time it will be a little bit more complicated because of the whole piece. Taking the same detailing brush, I paint the external part of the wheels, but this time I'm making a different approach. I divide each wheel in two parts and little by little I keep painting all the wheels. The outer parts are painted in the same way, but this time I'm just more careful to not to paint over the earth color of the tracks. Here you have the final result and we have all the running gear painted. The amount of time I spent painting these pieces were not too high, and I think it took me almost 30 minutes to paint them all. So I think it is acceptable at least. I take black grey and light grey both for a model color. Moving on to the main hull of the tank, I use this same medium grey color mix to paint a different parts. I have to be very precise while painting this tow cable because I can paint the main hull of the tank. If you prefer it, you can use some paper sheet to max the area. I painted also the machine gun of the radio operator. This time only the base coat will be applied. Also I painted in grey these spare track links of the rear area, just to make them different from the track links of the sides, as I planned to paint them in a rust look. All the tiny pieces have the base color now. And we don't have to worry too much about some paint leaks, because later everything will be unified with the weathering techniques. I know that there are still some missing details that I did not paint, but due to this scale they might get completely covered by weathering and it could be effortless. This is the final result with the whole tank painted. Alright, let's dive with animals. I take Humbro colors matte 72, matte 100 and matte 18. This type of paints cannot be airbrushed directly from the pot, so I use the enamel thinner also from the same brand. This will allow us to create a nice and fluid consistency to work properly with the airbrush. To prepare the paint dilution, first I add some drops of thinner 
and later I take with the paintbrush the paint out of the pot. Lower parts of the tank are very exposed to mud and dust accumulation, so in this area I'll apply a bigger amount of paint. I move to the front ammo where I will airbrush this time more carefully. It is important to keep in your mind the basic weathering scheme you want to create on the model. In this case, I want to apply a heavy effect on the tank so I almost cover the entire front piece. On the sides, I don't look for a so heavy effect as before, but I keep going applying vertical movements. In some areas, it might be necessary to repeat the application. On these pieces, it is very important to reach all the recesses to get a realistic and convincing result. These are the type of movements I make with the airbrush. I press the trigger in a small movement just to control the paint that I apply. Also, circular movements are pretty handy. I apply dust over the upper parts of the hull including the engine deck and crew hatches. Now you can see all the dust work applied over the tank hull. I've also applied this paint on the running gear and lower parts. For this task, I prefer to have a very dense mix for airbrushing instead of having a very diluted color. Alright, now let's remove the enamel. In this technique, it is key to not to start removing the enamel color too early. If you do, you will remove too much paint. Paint drying times gives me enough time to clean my airbrush and prepare the workbench, so don't worry about it. As always, I like to start on the less exposed areas. I take this time a flat brush and a little bit of thinner, and a moist surface with the brush. I start removing the paint, and I apply vertical movements removing the paint in small amounts because I prefer to have a better control of the technique. As you can see, I remove more amount of paint of the upper parts because the accumulation of dirt and mud behaves on real tanks. I work with the fenders as well. In the front area of the hull, I try to not remove too much dust because I want to have a heavier dust effect in this area. I create a streaking effect just by turning 90 degrees my brush. If you make it softly, you can control very well the paint. Small pieces and parts, such as the road lights and their protectors, don't accumulate too much dust, so I remove almost all the paint. When working in horizontal surfaces, I change my paint brush. This time I like to use a rounded one with a wood tip. In the crew hatches area I also remove most of paint. In these type of areas the crew tends to polish the surface with their movements. Working now on the engine deck I start by removing the paint from the fuel and oil caps. Also in these big flat surfaces I like to change my approach and instead of use a little amount of thinner I moist completely the area with thinner to create a different effect. Also, it is very interesting if you combine the result using both paint brushes. On turret sides, I work removing and creating vertical strips and stroking effects using mainly the flat brush. In the mantlet, because this is the front piece of the turret, I leave more amount of paint. Also, to get more variety of effects, I use old brushes which are very weathered, and I try to scratch the paint instead of removing it with thinner. The more variety of tools I use to remove the paint, the more interesting our result will be. Because turret roof is the higher part of the tank, it is better to create a later dust effect. This time I remove the paint around the crew hatches and the access areas. Again, I take a dry brush and I try to scratch the paint. Dust application has been different depending on the tank area. So this is the result created with the humeral enamels, and I have applied this effect around all the tank except of the main gun. For example, front and side armors have received a higher amount of paint in comparison with the engine deck. You can see the difference between the start and finish green tone of the tank and on the areas where the dust have been applied. Working with enamels is the only technique that allows us to create an effect like this. What I pretend with this technique is only a basic approach of the final weathering result. The result we have now is pretty flat and desaturated. In the next video we will work with oils to increase the contrast and pushing more complexity to the main color. Please consider subscribe and give it a like if you find this type of content interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you in the next one.